This is problem 12-2 parts A and B from chapter 12 and we're given a table here that has real GDP, consumption, saving, and investment and we're asked to fill in the missing numbers um, and we're told that these are numbers for a hypothetical economy in which the marginal propensity to save is constant at all levels of real GDP, investment spending is autonomous, and there is no government. Okay, so first of all, we can figure out um, the rest of our consumption column by knowing that the marginal propensity to save is constant. So remember that because any money that goes into the disposable income of consumers can either be allocated to spending or consumption or to saving. So consumption plus saving always is going to add up to someone's entire income, right? So someone's marginal propensity to save is constant means that also their marginal propensity to consume is constant. Um, so we can use that information knowing that the marginal propensity to consume is constant. We can use the numbers that were given in the table to find out the marginal propensity to consume and we can use that to then fill in the rest of the consumption column. So let's start there. And as usual when there's a big table of numbers involved I like to use Excel to help me with doing some of the math. Um, so I've already filled in the numbers that are already filled in in this table. I've filled them in in my Excel spreadsheet. Of course you can do this on paper um, with with a paper and pen or pencil. Um, it's certainly not uh, major math that would be uh, that big of a problem on paper. Um, but I just like to use Excel since I'm already on my computer for these things. So to find out what our consumption is here when we have real GDP of 4,000, we need to know our marginal to propensity to consume. What is the definition of marginal propensity to consume? Marginal propensity to consume gives us the ratio of change in consumption to change in disposable income. Remember, in an economy where there is no government, the GDP equals your disposable income. Because the only difference between um, GDP and disposable income in an economy with a government is taxes, right? So taxes would take some of that money out um, from the real GDP. So we're told though that this economy has no government, which means, I'm just going to type this down here so we'll remember what we're working with, no government means GDP equals disposable income. So for our marginal propensity to consume, MPC, we know that this is the ratio or the fraction of the change in consumption over change in disposable income, which for us means change in GDP, right? So we want our marginal propensity to consume is going to be change in consumption divided by our change in GDP. Right? And that's just from the definition of what marginal propensity to consume means. Um, when the amount, that I the amount that I consume changes, how does the GDP also change? Or how does disposable income change? And really vice versa. We can look at this fraction in either way. So for us, what does that mean? So how do you calculate the change in something? It's just subtracting today's value minus yesterday's value, right? So for our first... Um, to figure out our marginal propensity to consume, we can take our change in consumption. We can find from our consumption column, right? So we went from 500 to 2,000. So my change in consumption is going to be 2,000 minus 500. And then I want to divide that by the change in GDP. So D GDP went from 0 to 2,000. So that change is 2,000 minus 0. And then I'll plug that into my calculator or I'll just ask Excel to do it. So I want 2000 minus 500 divided by 2000 minus 0. And Excel tells me that that's 0.75. So I know that from 
a GDP of zero to a GDP of 2000, my marginal propensity to consume was 0.75. Okay? And we're told that the marginal propensity to save is constant which we know means our, also our marginal propensity to consume is constant, right? Because savings and consumption are our only two options. Um, so if you're saving a constant amount, you're also consuming a constant amount. Hopefully that makes sense. Because um, everything you're not saving is going to consumption. So our marginal propensity to consume is 0.75. Now, I can use that information to fill in the rest of my consumption column. How do I do that? Now, to me, the easiest way to remember this process is to take our marginal propensity to consume formula and rearrange it. So now I know my marginal propensity to consume equals my consumption two, or my second consumption, minus my consumption one, divided by GDP 2 minus GDP 1, right? So that's just the change in consumption, consumption the second year minus consumption the first year or whatever your time period is, divided by the change in GDP. So now what I want to be able to figure out is my consumption 2, right? So I know that I started a consumption of 2,000 and my GDP goes up to 4,000, I want to know what my consumption goes up to. So I want to be able to solve for C2, my consumption 2. So I'll just rearrange this formula. Um, if I multiply both sides of this formula by the change in GDP, I get marginal propensity to consume times GDP 2 minus GDP 1. Right, so that's where I multiplied both sides by the change in GDP to get it out from under this fraction here. And I have that that equals consumption or C2, consumption 2 minus consumption 1. Now I just really have just one more step to um, solve for consumption 2. And let's see, let's make this a little bigger. So when I solve for consumption 2, for C2, I just get that mar marginal propensity to consume times GDP 2 minus GDP 1, and then I'll add C1 to both sides so that I get C2 on the same side, or on its side by itself, plus C1. So that will give me my C2, which is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for consumption in the second time period, so after GDP goes up. So all I have to do is translate this formula, plug in the things I know, and then it will give me my, the thing I want to know. So how do I apply that where we are? Okay, so I know that real GDP went up from 2,000 to 4,000, and I want to know what consumption went to. So that means I'll use my marginal propensity to consume, which was 0.75, which we know is constant, so it'll stay the same. And I want to multiply that by the change in GDP. See, I'm referring to my formula down here that I found just by rearranging the, the MPC formula. So I want to do my new GDP, which is 4,000, minus my old GDP, which is 2,000. And then I want to add my first consumption. So I want to add consumption before, which was 2,000. And that should give me my new consumption. And it does. It gives me 3,500. So to follow that same pattern, the next period of time, I know that GDP went up from 4,000 to 6,000. So I'm going to take my marginal propensity to consume, 0.75 times GDP 2, which is 6,000, minus GDP 1, which is 4,000, the previous GDP. And then I want to add the previous consumption, which was 3,500. And that gives me my new consumption. And then I can get Excel, because Excel can do these formulas faster than I can, to do the rest. So I want to do 0.75 times my second GDP, minus my first GDP, 
and then add to that my first consumption and it'll give me my new consumption and tell Excel to do that all the way down the list. Okay, so we've got those. We can fill those into our table. Um, so 500, 2,000, 3,500, 5,000. 3,500, 5,000. 6,500, 8,000. 6,500 and 8,000. Now, what about saving? How do we figure out what our savings is? Remember, we talked about this being an economy that has no government. When there's no government, GDP equals disposable income, and disposable income means your consumption plus your savings, because everything that comes into your pocket for you to dispose of, <laughs> all of your disposable income, you can allocate either to consuming things or to saving that money, right? So consumption plus savings or saving is all of your disposable income, which equals our GDP in this economy. So saving and consumption should add up to real GDP. So we just want to take GDP minus consumption and we get saving for all of these. So zero minus 500 gives us negative 500 for our first savings. Second savings, 2,000 minus 2,000, so that's zero. Our third savings, 4,000 minus 3,500, so it gives us 500. Third, we have 6,000 minus 5,000, so it gives us 1,000. Fourth, we have 8,000 minus 6,500, so we get 1,500. And last, we have 10,000 minus 8,000, so we have 2,000. So you can, uh, hopefully my math is correct on all of those, but savings plus consumption should equal the GDP in this economy where we have no government. Lastly, we need to fill in investment. It tells us that investment spending is autonomous. Saying that just means every single time the investment's going to be the same amount. Um, so investment's just going to stay at the same level that it's at no matter what. So we just fill in our 1500 all the way down. That's what investment spending is autonomous means that we don't have a contr any control over how much we do or don't put into investment. It's just going to stay at the same level that it was before. We can check that answer. We're good to go. And then it asks us for the economy's marginal propensity to save. Remember, we found the marginal propensity to consume was 0.75. And we know that anything that's not sa consumed is saved. So the rest, if we... Our, we have a marginal propensity to consume 75%, then our marginal propensity to save has to be all the rest, which is 25%, right? So our marginal propensity to save is 25%, which you also could find by uh, doing that same formula there that we did for the propensity to consume. You could do that with saving and GDP rather than the consuming and GDP that we did before. And then the marginal propensity to consume is the 0.75, which we found. And the equilibrium level of real GDP, this we know just because this is the rule for what equilibrium GDP is, is wherever GDP equals consumption plus investment, right? You can um, look in chapter 12 at some of these graphs where you see that the, um, the equilibrium level for the economy is wherever y or GDP equals C plus I. So I think, uh, look at say figure 12-4 um, on page 275 um, and you'll see the graphical depiction of this. So wherever consumption plus investment equals GDP. And I'll go back to Excel and um, copy 1500 into all of these cells so that I have my investment. Now I want to add C plus I in this column, C plus I, and then I can do consumption plus investment, and I want to copy that formula all the way down my table and see where that is equal to GDP, and it happens to occur at a GDP of 8,000, so I'll put that in as our equilibrium level of GDP which is where GDP equals consumption plus investment. 
and we're good to go. And the last part of this question is to find the numerical value of the multiplier for the economy. And the numerical value of the multiplier is always just 1 over the marginal propensity to save. So 1 divided by 0.25, which is 1 over 1 fourth, or just 4. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to come by office hours or shoot me an email.